chapter 3. Here we will talk about content marketing. In this chapter we will talk about the following topics. What is content marketing? Content marketing types, content marketing strategy, self-promotion, examples and upcoming trends. Before we even start explaining what content marketing is, please do the following exercise. Pause the video so that you can have enough time to do it. Try googling an item or a service. It can be anything you want, from a phone, food, vitamins, a hair salon, a clothing line, etc. If possible, try looking at the same item on their official website and maybe on their social media account. Can you spot any differences? If so, make some notes. If not, no problem. This chapter should teach you about content marketing and how to tell it apart from other types of marketing. What is content marketing? Before we dive into content marketing, let's take some time and see what you already know about this topic. Pause the video again and take a few minutes to try and answer the following questions. You can write the answers on the paper and check them later. Question 1. When you hear the word marketing, what is the first thing you think of? To understand what content marketing is, we should first look at its two keywords separately. Marketing is a science that deals with the research of target markets and users. The aim is to establish profitable relationships with users. To put it in simpler words, marketing is the process of identifying customer needs and determining how to meet those needs in the best way possible. The second word is content. Content is the information contained within communication media. This includes the internet, cinema, television, radio, audio CDs, books, magazines, physical art and live event content. It's directed at an end user or audience in the publishing art and communication sectors. If you combine these two things, you get content marketing, also described as a marketing technique of creating and distributing valuable, relevant and consistent content to attract and acquire a clearly defined audience. Now think, would you be able to tell the difference between advertising and marketing? Don't worry if you can't, we will try to explain it. Advertising normally focuses on seeking public attention from a larger audience. It is usually a one-time thing, has a short usage period and targets everyone the same way. Think of all the pop-up ads on your computer or the jumbo posters on the side of the driveway. On the other hand, content marketing is a more systematic process that takes time to plan its strategy, research and connect to its audience. This results in more personal quality content that can be reused more than once and offers value. However, advertising is still a very important part of the overall marketing strategy, but is also the most expensive one, so it's crucial to have other techniques and strategies to succeed in the business world today. Here is an example. Let's say your company is focused on selling handmade jewelry, so you need content that is going to help you attract people who will find your products, hence jewelry, attractive and find it a desire or a need to purchase them. In a regular advertisement, you would probably just use a nice picture of one product and the name of your company, then display it on a jumbo poster or in magazines. But content marketing wants to offer the audience more value and intrigue the possible buyer. Instead of just simple information like advertising, content marketing wants to sell a story. So in this case, you could for example hire a model who would wear your jewelry to an event and make a review of it. It seems simple, but content marketing is a lot more than that. To understand this more clearly, let's first learn about the buyer's journey. Now try to think about your experiences when you plan on buying something. Try to imagine purchasing something that you don't buy every week, like groceries or necessary hygiene products. Where do you get the idea that you need this product or a service? And how do you decide where to buy it or even which brand to choose? Try making a timeline of events that happen from realizing you need or want something to the actual purchase. The timeline you've created has a name and it's called the buyer's journey. The buyer's journey, also called the buying cycle, 
refers to the different stages of a person's process when purchasing a product or paying for a service. The first stage is awareness, when a person becomes aware that they need a product or a service and therefore starts thinking about where to get it. After the person becomes aware of their need, they start researching how to solve their problem. This means they try to find the right providers for their needs, the best dealers, the most suitable products or services, etc. After researching the person needs to consider which provider they are going to choose for their purchase, they can compare different offers, products, services and vendors to make sure they will choose the right one. Most people try to find the highest quality product or service at a fair price, so this stage can take a while. Once the person makes a decision, they move forward with the transaction, they buy the product or pay for the service they choose. Hopefully the person, now the buyer, is content with their purchase and they return to the provider when the same need repairs or they share their satisfaction by giving a good review, talking about the provider to a friend, etc. This way, the buying circle is continuing and on, making sure both the buyers and the vendors are content. Let's look at an example. Greg is a young man who lives in a small village and is about to finish his studies. One day he gets an offer for a job that is in the city nearby. Everything seems perfect until he discovers one problem. The city is a 20 minute drive away from his home, but Greg does not own a car. Now how is he supposed to get to his dream job daily? Greg became aware of his need, he needs a way of transport to be able to get to the job and back home every day. Now Greg needs to do his research. First, he looks up the local bus schedule to see if he can take it to the firm every day. Since the bus timetable is not quite consistent with his work schedule, Greg starts looking at the other options. He thinks it would be the best if he bought a car. After looking at a lot of offers and deals, he finally decides that it would be the best for him if he bought a used car. Now he only needs to consider what car to buy. He decides on a model and purchases it at a local car shop. Greg is now working at his new job and driving around in his new car as happy as ever. But why is the buyer's journey important for content marketing? Because it has a big role, especially in the first two stages of buying cycle. Good content can raise awareness about a need to a person who hasn't even thought about needing a specific product or a service until they sit in a container. Just imagine, you're scrolling on social media and you see a post of a girl doing her hair. She is talking about a new hairdo she is about to try, but in the process, you notice her hair is very nice, healthy and shiny. You watch the video and notice that she casually mentioned the hair product she uses. Conveniently, the links to the online store that sells those products are already in the description, so you feel the need to check them out. A second later, your online cart is full of those products because you also want your hair to be as nice as the girls in the post, so you buy them. And this is how the content marketing works. At first glance, the girl in the post just wanted to show you her new hairdo, but between the lines, she was also selling hair products. By mentioning the brand, talking about her hair routine, giving the links in the description and maybe even a discount code, she makes people interested in those products. And she achieved that with a simple 2 minute post that reached all of her followers within a few hours. So that is why content marketing is important in the first stages of buying cycle. If you compare it to traditional advertising, you would just see the products in an ad and probably wouldn't even think about them twice. But by giving you content, where you first noticed the girl's beautiful hair, you felt intrigued to find out how she keeps it like that. This is because content marketing can help you raise awareness of needs people don't even know they have. Going a step further by providing links and other sources makes then the research stage a lot simpler and more limited to your company. But if you are not convinced yet, let's look at some other benefits and objectives of content marketing. First, you need to keep in mind that one of the main objectives of content marketing is informing your audience or potential buyers about your company, products, services, events and other relevant information regarding your business. This way, you educate your audience and also the rest of the market about your products and services, which cannot result just in an increased profit from the sales but also in new partnerships. 
So make sure your content includes all the important information that your audience could find interesting and necessary when researching what you sell. The simple formula for this is to give a necessary message to the right people at the correct time. Now, the goal of content marketing isn't always just selling the product or service to the buyer. In today's world, having followers, subscribers and other forms of an audience are just as important as sales itself. Just like in raising awareness, traditional advertising has become a bit too uninteresting to attract an audience and make them subscribe to your source of information. That is why your content also needs to be fun and interesting so that it engages your audience and leaves them interested in finding out more about your company, products and services. Not only will the same people return to your content, but they will also share it with their family, friends and followers, resulting in a bigger audience and cost-free promotion for you. Interesting and useful content will make your business more findable among all other similar vendors online. And a bigger audience means more potential buyers and therefore more sales. In connection with the previous two objectives, another advantage of content marketing is the creation of meaningful relationships with the audience or potential customers. If your content is interesting, personal and interactive, people will feel connection to your company resulting in a loyal audience who will keep returning to your products or services. This way it increases your client's lifetime value, which is the total value spent by a client on your business. Research shows that people who tend to make business with brands they already know and have a positive experience, which is why making positive relations can be very beneficial to your company. Content marketing can reduce customer accusation costs, CAC. CAC is a metric that indicates the cost invested in marketing and sales to acquire each new client. Content is mostly evergreen and can be shared with a big number of people for a long time. In the meantime, the sales team can focus on other things like personalized and assertive approach. It can generate more leads, leads being potential clients who visit your website or other channels and leave some kind of information about them. The more leads you have, the better the chances to sell your products or services. Content marketing adds value to your company or business. When the audience sees you as an authority on the subject, they find your content more valuable and useful. Until now, we know content marketing has a lot of roles. It tells your company story, sells products or services, educates and informs the audience, creates and maintains meaningful relations with your audience, etc. But can you do it all? Think about some content marketing that you've seen lately. Did all of it seem good quality content to you? What were the differences? Pause the video if needed. The first indicator of quality content is if the audience wants to read, view or listen to it. If your content is good, people will like to see or listen to it and will keep returning to your website or another channel. But if your content has great quality, they will even be willing to pay for it. To make sure your content has this kind of quality, you can first analyze what kind of content you are personally interested in and apply this knowledge to the process of creating your content. Another thing that can assure you create your content worth paying for is simply asking your audience what they want. Sure, this sounds like a risky step, because in the end, you can't satisfy all of them 100%, but it still allows you to connect to your audience and get at least some new ideas about what they want. The next sign of quality content is that driving sales shouldn't be its obvious objective or primary goal. This way the audience won't feel attacked by another ad, but will rather find pleasure in the valuable fun content itself gradually possibly developing the need to make a sale. Another sign of quality content is its accessibility and inclusivity. Sure, you can rely on just one type of content marketing, but we can assure you this will probably leave out some potential buyers. You need to keep in mind different skills, needs and abilities. That's why you should consider the possibility of some audience having hearing or sight problems, the language they speak and use, their understanding skills, etc. These little details will make the audience feel appreciated and thought of, ensuring meaningful relations with them. The last important sign of content's good quality is if it is worth its price. If you want to have payable content, you need to make sure it is worth paying the extra money, therefore offering more to the paying audience than the free one. 
Meanwhile, you also need to make sure your cost-free content is intriguing enough to make the audience want to pay more. What about the skills you need for content marketing? Marketing itself requires a lot of different skills and knowledge on its own. Of course, you should know the basics of marketing that we talked about in the first module. But now let's take a look at some sets of skills that also come in handy in content marketing. The first set is related to people and working with them. As we said before, marketing is more personal and focused on potential buyers, so communication is the key skill for it. Without being able to express yourself and describe your services or products to sell them, there is no marketing. Connected to this are interpersonal skills, since frequent interactions with both buyers and colleagues are a necessary part of marketing. So creating and maintaining good relations is key to your marketing success. Another related skill is collaboration. Lack of good collaboration is the most common reason for ineffective teamwork as it reduces the efficiency and quality of your work. By working on your collaboration skills, your team will minimize miscommunication and misunderstandings. Especially in projects that require working with people from other organizations, cities or even countries, we must know how to adapt and address our differences both personal and work-related. Also, part of the people's skills in marketing is leadership. This doesn't apply just to the manager or leader of your team, but to each individual. It doesn't matter if you are trusted with a small task, a project or leading a whole team, everyone must take responsibility for their work and know how to include other colleagues, divide tasks and other things to achieve the objectives. The next set of skills is more connected to organization and work. As we mentioned before, good organization and planning are key to successful work process, especially in marketing, which is a very dynamic process. You also need to be very adaptable and have a good set of problem-solving skills that can help you overcome any obstacles or missteps on the way. Especially content marketing requires time and consistency and the results can take a while to become visible, so you must plan your strategy smartly. And for that you need the skills of research and analysis. These two are part of different stages of marketing. You research your audience, their needs, interests, what type of content provokes them to action, etc. You also find important information in studies, surveys and case studies that can help you in creating and promoting your content. Marketing also requires a lot of measurements and calculations of different data that can help you in all stages of marketing process. So data analysis and analytics play an important role as well. Attention to detail is another skill that can come in handy for marketing as your content will be seen by a lot of people. This is why you need to make sure they get the necessary information in an understandable, intriguing way. On a more technical side, website management is also a necessary skill in marketing today. This doesn't mean that you have to create websites or be a developer, but knowing how to upgrade a page and other basic skills are usually required in the marketing world. But keep in mind that the technological world is changing every day and also websites are different so the focus here is not on the specific skills or knowledge but more on your will to learn new things and keep in touch with technological development. To now sum these skills up, we can add project management as these skills in a way combine it all. Juggling multiple clients or projects, keeping track of everything, efficiency, working with deadlines, prioritizing tasks, delivering quality products, and so on. The following set of skills is connected directly to content creation. Content creation can be a skill on its own. It requires a lot of knowledge about your product or service, your audience, and the market, and then creating content that will take into account all those factors. Content creation also requires creativity, ingenuity, design and uniqueness. You also need to understand the purpose of the content you are creating and how it will affect your target audience, sales, etc. Other skills you will require from this package depend mostly on the type of content you want to create. If you want to make written content, you will need writing skills. This is already a demanding skill in most job descriptions, but it is also very important for content marketing. This includes all grammar, typing, written communication, text editing and so on. If you want more visually stimulating content, 
you can consider gaining some more visual marketing skills. This can be anything from simple skills such as selecting images for the content and taking pictures of social media to more complex skills such as graphic design, video production, audio production, photography, etc. In addition, you will also require editing skills and knowledge of design or editing programs and apps that can help you with it. And while you create any type of content, storytelling can be also a very useful skill for it. A good story makes your company more memorable and can be used to intrigue the audience. A method often used in marketing is a hero's journey. In content marketing, this is used in a way that creates the story of a hero who is your audience. The enemy, an issue or obstacle they are facing, needs to be defeated so they can live a better and more fulfilling life. And guess who will help the hero? Your product or your services, of course. And no matter what type of content you choose to create, you always need to have at least some copywriting skills. This means that you can create content that makes your audience interested in your content and therefore willing to continue reading more about your product or services converting them from readers to buyers. You can do this by analyzing what intrigues you when you find good marketing content and then applying those findings to your content creation. You can also get feedback about the content you create and then apply what you have learned from it to your following work. The last set of skills is important for how you handle your content once you have created it. First, you must decide where you want your content to be marketed. If you decide on email marketing, you should for example know how to gather email addresses from your potential buyers and how to edit email messages, communicate via emails and so on. For social media marketing, you should know how to use the app, gain followers, do self-promotion, adapt your content from visual to audio messages, etc. And since most of the content marketing is done on the internet, you should have some basic SEO skills, which we talked about in one of the previous modules. Briefly, this means being able to optimize your content for the search engines, making you more visible among all the similar businesses on the web. This can include tasks like competitor analysis, keyword placement and keyword research. Also related to handling your content are content promotion skills. Some experts say that content creation is just 20% of content marketing, making promotion a very important skill. The simple explanation is, it doesn't matter how good your content is if nobody sees it. This skill includes outreach, cooperating with influencers, choosing the right platforms, etc.